electrical system is shorting out uh, and you actually, when, when, when I touch this, I become the ground um, uh, to this hot water heater. Uh, and it doesn't matter if I'm plugged into 50 amp, 30 amp, uh, or 20 amp, I still get a shock uh, from this hot water heater. Other than, other than that, both the gas and the hot water heater work fine. You can see that we have two different types of wheels here. The one on the left is a standard wheel, uh, aluminum wheel that comes uh, on the outside of the unit or mounted to the unit. <clears throat> the one on the right is the spare tire. And the reason we had to put the spare on is because I kept getting flat tires with that particular uh, wheel on the right and uh, took it into a number of different um, places that just simply could not find a leak in the tire and then took it into a place that is very familiar with uh, trailer tires and the young man that was working on it he actually found that the, it wasn't the tire that had the leak there was actually a defect and a crack in the rim itself uh, so it appears that there's a uh, a defect in the actual manufacture of the rim so we'll see if keystone replaces that this particular slide is a slide that uh, failed uh, when I was in South Carolina, and um, this is where it blew off a hydraulic hose, and I had to uh, end my trip and uh, take this back to Batavia, Ohio, to Holman Motors to have it fixed. My concern is you can still see there's staining on the bottom, and I'm very concerned about how much sagging there is in this bottom piece uh, along this bottom here because it tells me that there's some kind of weight in there whether it's hydraulic fluid or um, perhaps insulation that's soaked with hydraulic fluid but but there's some kind of weight there I've, I've never seen perhaps that is normal but I've just never seen it uh, uh, on a trailer where it sags that much none of these uh, gearings for these uh, slides were greased there was no grease on any of them uh, so I had no choice uh, during one of my trips I had to crawl up under all the slides and, and make sure there was grease there was a great deal of rust and corrosion um, underneath all of these slides to the point that I had some real concern and I actually painted uh, quite a bit of the rusted parts uh, with Rust-Oleum, uh, feeling that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I own the unit now. i got to try and take care of it. I've got it financed for 20 years, and uh, the way that this thing uh, seems to be falling apart, I'll be lucky if it lasts for, you know, another 20 weeks. But um, uh, uh, this, this sagging in this, in this underbelly is very, very concerning to me because this is where it popped off. These ladders on the outside, um, you know, they're probably fine if you weigh about 70 pounds. I, uh, I'm not real sure what they're uh, rated for, but we had two broken steps uh, that we found on our first tr trip. And uh, as you can see, there's only one screw on each side of these steps that is actually holding this step to this uh, uh, metal rail. I believe it's an aluminum rail. So I'm not sure that that um, uh, that I would count on this ladder. I actually carry a, a, another ladder with me so that I am able to access the roof. But uh, I don't think that this ladder was built to really um, uh, be able to get much use from an adult. Um, and that is uh, considering the fact that the folks at Holman Motors told me that you really do need to uh, inspect your roof after each trip. This vertical piece of molding is what uh, supports the skirt underneath the uh, outside of the slide. And as you can see, it's been taped and glued, and that's because it completely fell off. If you look at the photographs that I have, uh, you can tell that that piece completely broke off. It fell off. I had to wrap the top of that piece with rubber roofing material and epoxy glue and, uh, and just glue it back up there. 
there was just simply no way of bolting it back up there. The bolt was just gone. And this occurred on both sides of the, uh, of the trailer. Uh, and without these um, supports on there, my concern is that these, uh, these outside uh, uh, skirts on these slides would just be flapping in the breeze. Again, under this particular slide, and, and right now we're looking at the slide on the um, right side of the trailer, um, had a substantial amount of rust corrosion. I did a lot of painting uh, with Rust-Oleum, and there was no grease. No grease. I mean, these, these gearing, this gearing was just dry. So there was no grease whatsoever um, uh, that I could tell on any of that gearing. This panel, um, the numeric panel, is supposed to be a numeric panel that locks and unlocks the door. And it does appear to work fine, but you'll be able to see in some of the photographs how it was falling off. I had to epoxy it back on. The steps are just, I cannot believe the amount of rust. There is no lubrication on them whatsoever. But what is concerning to me is for a trailer that's only a couple of months old, there just seems to be an extraordinary amount of rust. Notice on the left side of the frame, uh, in the right side right there, you've got rust. <clears throat> There's quite a bit of rust there on the left side. Um, and I just have some real concern uh, about having this much rust and corrosion when allegedly uh, this trailer, the only time this trailer <laughs> had been on the road was when it was uh, driven from the manufacturer to uh, to the dealer in Batavia, Ohio, to Holman Motors, and um, uh, I personally have uh, you know used the trailer. I've owned it uh, maybe 122 days, I believe, total. But during the great uh, majority of that time, the trailer simply has been parked and covered. Here we are on the inside. The inside is aesthetically very pretty. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, the problem is the quality of workmanship, the hinges on almost every single cabinet were just screwed in until they stripped. Um, so I have had to work on uh, the hinges of almost every cabinet in order to, uh, to get them, I, uh, in order to get the screws to stick, um, you could either use mollies or you simply use some toothpicks and you, you, you push some toothpicks in there and uh, break them off and those then give the screw something to grip onto. Uh, and of course you don't uh, screw them down with a power driver until they strip. You'll notice we have a speaker on this side on the right here. However, on the left side, the speaker is falling off. Um, this happened apparently while we were driving. There's the speaker. You saw the bare wire and you can see the dents that when the speaker fell down, they obviously line up just perfectly uh, with the corners of that speaker. There's the screws and there's the multiple holes that somebody made in order to try and get the screws in. So again, uh, this is a, something that has to be remounted probably all of the speakers uh, need to be taken down and remounted. Uh, again, cabinetry, screws are put in until they strip. This particular uh, air vent for the uh, air conditioning, uh, nothing was coming out. So when I took the vent off, what I noticed was the piece of the ceiling, circular piece of the ceiling that was cut out uh, in order for uh, this vent to be functional, that piece was still in there. So uh, somebody wasn't paying attention uh, while they were building this. This unit has been eating light bulbs like I've never seen any RV eat light bulbs. Uh, I think I have replaced just about every single light bulb in this unit. And the only way that I can understand that that could happen is somebody left all the lights on for a very long time. Because normally I would think the light bulbs in an RV, there's one light bulb on the right side, they're burned out. 
that I have to replace. Normally light bulbs in an RV are going to last with pretty pretty fair amount of use, a good you know three to six months easily, and uh, literally within the first week uh, we were uh, replacing light bulbs, all of them. I uh, uh, end up buying a, a whole lot of light bulbs. <clears throat> Down here is a panel that covers the woofer speaker, which was just completely broken. Um, and I had to put this vertical piece of wood in and glue it in and, in order to fix it uh, because that, uh, that frame was just simply completely broken. Uh, and these are things that, you know, I mean, if you had... If you had, uh, you know, six weeks to do a walkthrough, uh, you could probably do it. But, you know, they give you about 30 minutes, and that's pretty much about it. You either want it or you don't. <clears throat> and during the walkthrough, the weather was very inclement uh, in Batavia, Ohio. So, you know, this is the third um, uh, RV that I have bought from Holman Motors. It's the third Keystone RV that I've bought. So I'm uh, a little bit uh, uh, disappointed with this quality here. The carpeting is a real problem. There are traffic patterns in this carpeting uh, that I've caught both on video and, uh, and with uh, photographs, still photographs. But you can just tell that this carpeting has, has a real uh, a traffic pattern and it has you know, some substantial wear uh, compared to uh, areas of the carpeting that look new, that you can tell where the new carpeting is, where there's, you know, been no wear, you know, like right there, uh, versus this. And, you know, nobody has ever worn shoes in this RV uh, since we've owned it. And we keep a rug by the door. 